Hey there, welcome to this course on the C language. This is a little bit of an un, uh, unconventional course from the standpoint, and you know, this is where we jump into kind of the roadmap of how we are going to go and conquer the C language, learn it. So this is an unconventional course from the standpoint that we do not start from, you know, the syntax of the C language, how to use it and all of that. We kind of defer that for later. What we start from, is the systems and systems what does systems mean so we visit back to 1970s and we try to understand what were the systems available back then because you know c language was invented or kind of um, made uh, to solve certain problems from the 1970s and turned out that turns out it did such a good job that even to this day uh, c language is kind of you know just still standing straight right so we will understand the systems used or the, the configuration of the systems in 1970s, which essentially uh, is like the CPU, memory, how they interacted with each other and so on and so forth. So once our kind of the models of the system uh, is clear, we have something that we can visualize and imagine, uh, you know, as we go towards learning the C language. And so the journey then after the systems understanding the models of the systems, what we're going to do is jump into understanding what machine code is. You know, essentially the zeros and ones that the CPU understands and executes as instructions, what are, the, uh, what are those? You know, what is machine code? What is it made up of and so on and so forth? Where does it come from? How can you write one on and so, so on your own and so on and so forth? So the machine code then leads us to the discussion of something called ISA, Instruction Set Architecture. Uh, we'll explore what this means in great detail. Uh, then we jump to assembly, right? And once we have done, you know, explored assembly, machine code, and the concept of ISA, it will give us that foundation of imagination and reasoning that we'll be able to carry forward when understanding the C language. And this is exactly how C language should be understood, uh, but most people kind of just you know, are taught the wrong way uh, or they learn it the wrong way, which is they start with the hello world program in C on an operating system. Um, and, you know, they don't know where to go from there. Typically, no one knows or on their own can figure out what C language is used for and, you know, things of that nature. All of that will be very clear and make sense once you take this approach. All right. So once we are clear with, you know, how text gets converted to zeros and ones, We'll spend time on that. Uh, we'll have like a hands-on demonstration for that. And once we are clear with that, you will understand uh, the tool chain. So um, the tool chain, which is, you know, compiler, you know, linker, assembler. Then there are other utilities for debugging purposes, object copy, GDB, so on and so forth. So you understand kind of where C language comes from, what problem it's trying to solve, and what are the tools that are allowed or that, that are available rather um, to kind of, you know, given a C program, a text file converted into zeros and ones, right? So once you understand the infrastructure, then we'll dive into, okay, let's leave assembly behind now. Uh, let's start with the C language and then we explore C language. You know, the 32 keywords that this language offers, We'll understand each one of um, those 32 keywords. We'll understand what function, utility, each one of the keyword performs, how we can use them, what combinations are allowed, what combinations are not, so on and so forth, how to reason about them. All of that um, we'll cover in our journey of you know covering the C language. So obviously we'll cover data types, uh, you know, user data types, language provided data types, pointers, arrays, functions, structs, unions, bit fields, uh, how to use structures, uh, you know, how people in the industry use structures or different parts of the C language, all of that. Towards the end, we also will do mixing C and assembly because there are times when, you know, you want to write a function in assembly and have it called or executed from a C program. So how do we do that? We'll cover that. How do we write source code with spanning kind of multiple uh, C files? What are libraries? We'll cover all of that. Now, 
Once all of this is done, towards the end, we'll uh, take a look at open source repositories and then try and understand, uh, obviously, open source code that is written in C. We'll try and browse through that and reason about, okay, which part of that is C syntax, which part of that is, um, you know, not C syntax, so on and so forth. And um, yeah, with that, we'll kind of, you know, end the, end the course. Now, this was about the roadmap. I have like a suggestion as to the mindset that you should uh, have while pursuing this course. And the mindset is that of what does the system do, right? So this one question is what we'll try and answer at every level. Like given a line of C code, given a line of, uh, or given a function or a program, uh, what will the system end up doing because of that program? And once you understand that, or once you kind of, you know, uh, grow that muscle, the mindset um, of thinking that way about a C program, it becomes very easy uh, to reason about what the C program is doing. And also, you'll be confident in terms of explaining that and kind of, you know, having a debate with, let's say, your other peers uh, uh, as to you know what the C program is doing and not to mention you will be confident about what your own program is doing so yeah with all of this uh, mm -hmm. we'll dive in and what I want to do next is enable you to quickly write your own C programs and once you can do that we'll dive into okay 1970s uh, you know systems and then go from there all right with this I'll see you in the next one